Inside man. Williams dishes off to Rainey Mason. That was a three-point attempt rebound Grant. Xavier went to the NCAA tournament six years in a row before they failed last year. Lost to Connecticut in the second round in 91. And on the turnover, Mason with a three-on-three three dishes to Gerald Williams. Tipped up and in by Irvin Johnson. Irvin Johnson averaging 18 plus Irvin a game. Johnson. He is their best shooter at 62%, their top rebounder, and he leads in block shots. And the first substitution, Tony Madison, 6'4 junior from Los Angeles. No surprise he's in early. No, they'll keep the pace going. What they're trying to do, Xavier, is beat the big men from New Orleans down court. Madison, a junior college transfer, good three-point shooter. Aaron Williams off the glass, rebound Irvin Johnson. Looks pretty good for a bad ankle. Well, the first couple of minutes, he's, he's playing like a first-round draft choice, maybe even a lottery pick. Inside to Johnson. Irvin Johnson, boy, is he working well. I like to see him when he's 100%. This is the type of game that the privateers want. Gentry going all the way in. Trying to challenge Irvin Johnson. Not a smart thing to do when you're only 5'11". Good no call by the ref. Privateers coming back. Here's Williams penetrating. Scoops it. It goes. What a terrific start to this game. End to end in New Orleans. Leading Xavier 10-7. Jamie Gladden, second leading score, number 22. They must overplay him from the outside. Williams, the third leading point man, and a foul. Bouncing foul, Pete Gillen, Brooklyn native, was an assistant to Digger Phelps in Notre Dame and Rolly Massimino at Villanova, his eighth year at Xavier. Everyone thought he was going to go to Notre Dame as the head coach, but he said he likes Cincinnati, he enjoys Xavier, and he enjoys his family. Well, that's a rarity. The guy enjoys most things. Huh? <laughs> most, most coaches don't. <laughs> Irvin Johnson committing the foul, and Michael McDonald off the bench. He's a 6'10 junior for the Privateers. He's not much of an offensive threat, but he's a put-back garbage type ball player, McDonald. There you see Reggie Garrett with a fine play defensively. Minutes have gone by in the opening half, and Gerald Williams oh, nice inside. Pitch. But you know what? McDonald went up without the ball, and it'll be Xavier. Well, McDonald's going in for the rebound. Then what happened? He lost the handle on. Watch a beautiful kickoff here. Beautiful dish. Just loses the handle. Hasn't got into the flow of the game yet. He might be in there as a sub only about 30 seconds. Usually you gotta get a light sweat before you get into the offensive rhythm. Defensive rhythm starts right away. Steve Gentry defended by Gerald Williams. Going low and unable to handle it is Brian Grant. So Brian Grant, the leading scorer of Xavier with the turnover. with upset victories at Tucson today. Their first ever tournament wins. The Atlantic 10, 4-0. Big E still hasn't lost. And the West bracket is the Cinderella bracket with Arizona knocked out, Georgia Tech, and New Mexico. Xavier went to a 2-3 zone. Right now, Gerald Williams is the point guard. Tony Madison, a larger guard in the other position. Privateers got to prove himself from outside now. Reggie Garrett off the glass. And Gentry really nearly lost that ball. This privateers hustle all over the floor. Aaron Williams missed the shot. And it's saved by Madison in the corner. 10 to 7, New Orleans leading Xavier. First round matchup. The winner will face the Indiana Wright State victor coming up after this game. Taking man-to-man -man up front, but it's dropped back to a 2-3. They're going to have to shoot from outside. And a free Madison for a three. Wins the hoop, the rebound by Brian Grant. Out to Gentry. He's got Gladden on the wing. Madison won't give him the shot. I'll tell you, Madison's a tough defensive player. In the hands of Gerald Williams. Williams will penetrate. Irvin Johnson trying to tip it in, and it goes. It hit the very top of the glass and came back in, and New Orleans now has run off eight straight points. His nickname is Slim. That was the second tip on that sequence. Williams comes right back. Third leading scorer at over 10 a game, Aaron Williams. 
Athletically, they say the best all-round athlete that Xavier had. But not an offensive threat, only off the board. Right. Effective zone for Xavier. Solid 2-3, active. Too much hands that time. You're right, Gentry. Steve Gentry, the junior from Winthrow High School in Cincinnati, Ohio, commits his first foul. And we'll have substitutions coming into the game as Larry Sykes. He's a big board man. And Tyrese Walker, number 34. Grant goes out. We'll watch for Walker because he has averaged nearly nine points a game. And Rainey Mason is in there again at guard for the University of New Orleans. Musket Musketeers are trying to keep their men fresh. They're making multiple substitutions. Williams with a high arcing shot on the baseline. Sykes the rebound. So Xavier went bigger and Privateers went smaller. Hawkins misses a three. Sykes battling for the loose ball. And we'll have a foul against the Privateers as Melvin Simon gets set back to check in. That'll be Irvin Johnson with his second personal foul. Now what do you do if you're Tim Floyd? And what you do is you sit him down. You gotta take him out for a while because there's 13 and a half minutes left in the first half. Talk to him, get his head straight. You might have to go to a zone to protect him the next time he comes in. Hawkins will inbound. He's got flat. Quick paced game, and this time Sykes can't handle the entry pass, and another turnover. That's the fourth Xavier turnover of this first half, and we have 13.30 remaining. Mason runs the show. They're playing with three guards now. Two big men down low, McDonald and Simon. Trying to penetrate is Mason inside out. Williams, very effective zone defense, and Simon now has to handle the burden of being the inside big man for them, for the privateers. This is Michael Hawkins. Bumps it out to Sykes, and that's off the hands of Gladden. Oh, Larry Lembo says it is still Xavier Ball. Privateers, two years ago, lost to Kansas in the first round of the NCAA tournament. This is their third appearance in the big show. Loose ball, Simon has it for New Orleans. And they don't have the fast break. This is a better tempo right now for the privateers to set up. Be patient. Take the shot from the outside. Let the big guys hammer the glass. Back to nine, the score. Williams got a piece of it. They wanted to get it inside of Michael McDonald. Here is Hawkins in the crowd, nearly tied up and forced to travel because of Melvin Simon's good defense. How can this team play? without Irvin Johnson in the lineup. That's going to be interesting, but it's good that they have the lead and they sit him down with an advantage, Al. Well, you can't let him pick up his third foul very early in the game. I think by 10 minutes, they'll put him back in. But another two and a half minutes. I like this kid, Mason, number 10. He runs the show. Keep the ball in his hands. He's a transfer from Louisiana Tech who started the point guard on that team in the NCAA tournament two years ago. So he has tournament experience. Skip pass, and you gotta put that up, son. Goes inside with the big guys, and Grant gets it ahead and throws it away. Grant got a little too over anxious with that. And another turnover, charge to Xavier. They trail by three. New Orleans leading Xavier 12 to 9, and this is the scene here at the Hoosier Dome. Upwards of 38,000 expected, and you know they're all wearing red, waiting for the Indiana Hoosiers to play Wright State in the second game of this evening doubleheader. You saw Irvin Johnson with two fouls check back into the game for the Privateers. Got to watch the five count. Uh-uh, that's going to hurt you. That timeout called this early. I often think it's worth the possession not to call the timeout because you only get three timeouts a game. Yeah, it is early.
you're allowed five seconds after the referee puts the ball in your hands. Now, I say take the turnover because possession of the ball is worth 1.1, and that timeout's very important because you're only allowed three in the game. That was the play that caused them to call the timeout. Now, after the timeout, the privateers bring it up to the forecourt. Here's Melvin Simon. He's going to have to handle a lot of the burden tonight. Rainey Mason was too far underneath and hitting the decks of Sykes and Mason. That's got to sting a little bit getting hit by Sykes. Here's a nice block down, down low. Fortunately, no one got hurt. But they got tangled up. Privateers with Williams finding Mason. Gets open for the jumper, and Tyrese Walker gets the rebound. So Walker is in there with Grant and Sykes and Hawkins. So forget about the three guards. Xavier's going with a big team now. Whistle away from the ball, and it'll be a foul against New University of New Orleans. Their fourth team foul. And that'll be called against Melvin Simon. That's Pete Gillen. You mentioned loves Cincinnati and is happy to stay at Xavier. Winning his coach in Xavier history and the conference coach of the year this season. He says he's just bad Joe full of donuts. He's <laughs> happy just to have a nice normal life and that's why he stays at Xavier. He'll never build a dynasty, but they'll always be highly represented. And Tim Floyd at 39 years old, fifth year at the University of New Orleans after learning under the wing of Don Haskins at UTEP. The Bear, that's why they play such good defense. Nobody wants to play UTEP because the Bear is dynamite on D. After Gentry's miss, Xavier keeps it alive with Sykes, now into the hands of Steve Gentry. He is not a good shooter from outside. Gladden, however, is a lot better shooter, and they don't want to hit, let him get off at all. Tyrese Walker with a turnaround, rebound by Tony Madison. Xavier off to a slow start on offense, six turnovers, and they are shooting 27% from the field. And they're still in single digits with nearly halfway through this opening half. Madison off the glass. Simon, he's muscular, and he's fouled by Grant. Brian Grant, that'll be his first. You got to remember, it looks like the guards from New Orleans have open shots. They're only five foot nine. So they have to really be clear, and the ball play has to be quite a bit away from them. Otherwise, they'll get their, the ball right in their face. You know, you're right. They're five nine, but one of the things Tim Floyd said is that they may be short, but they're tough. And that's what he likes, tough guards. Plus, they're good. I like small guards because they can penetrate. They, you know, they have one asset on one end of the court and a liability on the other if you post them up. Reggie Garrett is in for the Privateers of New Orleans as Melvin Simon hits the first free throw. Aaron Williams will give Sykes a rest for Xavier. Melvin Simon from Archbishop Shaw High School in Harvey, Louisiana. There are three players on the Privateers from the same high school in Harvey, Louisiana, and they won the state championship, and that's what Tim Floyd likes. He likes guys that were part of a winning program. Winning is a habit, so is losing. <laughs> a champion is a person that repeats. That's what champion means. Now he should put that up, Williams, in good position. Xavier fortunately still has the ball. Williams, he won't. He went inside the grand, knocked away. Good defensive play by Reggie Garrett. Garrett on a runner. Whistle. And they're going to go the other way with it. So the privateers. Make it on a Xavier, Brian Grant, that's two. So Grant, their top inside player, now has two personal fouls. Got a box set here in the out of bounds. Watch for it to end up in Johnson's hands with a pick coming down low. Larry Sykes will come in for Brian Grant, so Pete Gillen doesn't want to take any chances with Grant. Burden with two fouls. Well, he's playing basketball. That'll get Pete Gillen upset. Reggie Garrett with the basket. 9.45 to go in the first half. Xavier still is not in the double digits in points. Well, they are now. As Aaron Williams, who started the night off with a basket, now has six. Johnson had to be careful. Didn't want to pick up his third. There's still nine and a half minutes left to go in the first half. Inside they go to Urban Johnson. And... Contact and a foul. 
Sykes is 6'9", about 240 pounds, does not back down, and he fouls Irvin Johnson, who will go to the line to shoot two. Each team now with four fouls. Johnson is a 67% free throw shooter. Probably the only thing he's not really great at, but he hits the first. All his greatness is in front of him. He's still about four years away from potential. Don't forget, he was stocking shelves in um, A and P. The A and P or Piggly Wiggly up in Baton Rouge. Think it was A and P in Baton Rouge. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and he came down and asked, would uh, would New Orleans take him? And and Tim took him and he ended up sitting out the first year. Well, you need a big guy to get to the top shelf of those. Uh, <laughs> they say at the beginning, he didn't know what to throw or how to throw a chest pass. You know, he grew six inches after he was out of high school, so he didn't really think he was big enough or good enough to play ball. Gentry has it knocked away, and an offensive foul called against Steve Gentry. Not pleased with that call. He's coming off a career high of 27 points against Evansville in the Midwestern Collegiate Conference Final. He really runs the show. He's the quarterback. There is Brian Grant, who's back on the floor with two fouls. So Grant and Irvin Johnson, the two big men, each with two fouls and playing with 8.58 remaining in the hand. Xavier has turned it over eight times already in this game. Seventeen to eleven, New Orleans. Madison hard off the glass, and Aaron Williams, second leading rebounder for Xavier, gets it back. Hawkins and a blocking foul. Try to get the charge was Rainey Mason. Good contact, and Hawkins is fouled by Mason. His first stepped in a little bit too late. Good call. Gerald Williams will come back into the ball game, replacing Madison for New Orleans. So the starting guard tandem of Mason and Williams in there now. Two five nines. Two water bugs. <laughs> Latin will put it up over Williams and hit. Both teams are under 35% shooting. That's the story in this opening half, and the lead is four for New Orleans. That's what you call a score. Glad in that time he was covered, but he still scored, got a good shot off. Here's Garrett. Good move by Reggie Garrett. Came in averaging eight points a game, and he's got six now. I think Williams is going to have to shoot from the outside to pull Johnson out. Gladden has it in and out. He was going for a three. Privateers up by six with 7.50 remaining in the first half. New Orleans, the number eight seed, Xavier number nine here in the Midwest region. Gerald Williams feeding Garrett. Garrett's getting inside effectively, and he's matched his season's high, or his season's average, I should say. Good play inside. Irvin Johnson imposing on defense. I think that's his third block. Three block shots, hitting the floor hard is Williams, and a foul against Xavier. Beautiful play by Williams that time. He had no shot once he heard the whistle, even though his back was to the basket, he tried to put it up and possibly get a two-shot foul. McDonald and Madison will come in for New Orleans. This is a Goodyear Aquatred, and... This is Gerald Williams. Watch as he penetrates in the middle here. He goes up. See, he heard the whistle. After the whistle, with his back to the basket, he threw it up. Now, if he gets a two-shot foul, the only reason he got it is because he threw it towards the basket. And the ref said it was a continuity foul. So you young people out there, anytime you hear the whistle, even if you're all the way down court, throw the ball up. So here's Williams on the line, shooting two. That's the 16 foul against Xavier. The next one will put New Orleans into a bonus. New Orleans still has one foul to give with 7.25 to go in the half. Makes the first. In the paint, New Orleans has been affected, but you remember what Al said, whichever guards hit, that'll be the key to the game. Field goals, better, but still under 40 for both teams, and Irvin Johnson off to a good start. One out of two for Williams. Chris Mack, by the way, a 6'5 senior from Cincinnati has had knee problems in his career. He's number 21, and he's checked in for Xavier. Williams with a jumper. Aaron Williams now with eight 
to lead the Musketeers. Williams has to become more selfish. They've nicknamed him A-Train. Mm. But the lane off, and he has to pop from 15. He used to take the A-Train, didn't he, in your younger days in New York? Yep, Eastern Parkway, the A-Train. Xavier back to the 2-3. That's Mack, who's got the knee brace on the right side. Xavier, the man-to-man. -man. They've been in his zone. 16 on the shot clock. Here's Gerald Williams all the way in. Pretty move and a tip in. I believe Melvin Simon should get credit for that. There's plenty of room for guys 5'4 and up. These two guards out here are both 5'9, and I think they're stretching it at 5'9. <laughs> Nine point lead now for New Orleans. Matches their biggest of the game. And we'll have a foul against the Privateers. And that is their 16th foul, and it's on Reggie Garrett. His first foul, that's Steve Gentry, who's back in, and Tyrese Walker goes to the bench. Irvin Johnson getting a breather right now. He has scored eight points, three rebounds, and has swatted away three. You know what it is? It's Grant time. You gotta get the ball to Grant. He got you to the big dance. Let's dance with him. And a foul on the inbounds pass. He'll be shooting, it'll be on Garrett, so he picks up his second, and that is the 17 foul against New Orleans. So that'll be one and one on the free throw line for Gentry. This will be the first free throw attempts for Xavier in the ball game. So they haven't been getting the ball inside. No, not at all. Grant needs the ball. Grant's their star, their offensive star. Get the ball to him. Gentry is from the same high school that produced a lot of big-name stars in basketball, like Rick Halloway, LaSalle Thompson, Lewis Orr, who's here tonight, and Tyrone Hill in the NBA, Withrow High School out of Cincinnati. He's aggressive, and he puts the ball awfully high. <laughs> Hits them both. He's got the idea, though. 24 to 17, New Orleans leads. Pressure up defensively. No pressure. When you have five foot nine guards, they break all pressure, neutralize all pressures. New Mexico State is leading Nebraska. 31 to 29. Another big eight team could be in trouble. Good block by Williams inside. Jamie Gladden has checked in, and Chris Mack, who gave the guards a breather, goes out of the ball game. They're catching you up on the scores in case you missed them from other first-round action today. Gladden guarded by Madison. He runs him into a, a screen. Couldn't get the shot off, but Hawkins can. Rebound is Melvin Simon. That's his fifth board of the first half. Good play, doesn't dribble. Give it to his guard, let the guard bring it up. 540 remaining in the first half. Seven point lead for New Orleans. Xavier now went to aggressive man to man, tried to create a turnover. Well, here's Williams. He wants to beat you off the dribble. Nearly did that time, and the rebound by Brian Grant. Grant intimidated him, fake going towards him. Williams put the ball up too hard. He has peripheral vision towards Grant. Get the ball to Grant, Gentry. Grant has scored only two points in the game, and he has averaged 18. So you're right, that's where Xavier is not getting it done. Aaron Williams is fouled going to the hoop, and he'll go to the line. Melvin Simon, and that will be two on Simon. Aaron can play inside or outside. Sometimes becomes a passive player. But his mom's here today, and they say when his mother's here, he's really on top of his game. As well he should be. That Irvin Johnson comes back in for New Orleans. You, know, you always have to play better when your mom's there. Well, I'm thinking the name Aaron. There's an Aaron Wool. There's two islands, one Aaron off Scotland and one Aaron off Ireland. I've been to both of them. Whoever thought we would get a geography lesson internationally from Mr. McGuire in this Xavier New Orleans game? I didn't think so. I didn't think so, but we appreciate it. Williams makes the free throws. He's got 10 points, high scorer for Xavier. Pressure's broken. Here is Mason. And Irvin Johnson, still going at it. Still going at it. Amazing he didn't get a basket with all of that inside. 
They're claiming, at least Garrett's claiming, that it was last touched by Xavier, but John Clockerty says no. It's the blue shirts with the ball. I, I like the way Johnson stayed with that, Dick. He stayed with about four or five putbacks. You know, Al, you talked about Brian Grant, how they have to get him in the offense. He's attempted only two shots, and that's three. That's three. That's you, not enough. You want to play Sunday afternoon, you're going to get the ball in Grant's hands, so you're not going to be around. Private tears, musketeers, a lot of tears in this game. <laughs> Let's not shed any tears. Feed inside. And Michael McDonald on a great feed after the penetration. Tell you, those guards can penetrate for the privateers. They're an exciting bunch. 4.15 to go in the first half. Inside, Grant. They have foul number 33, Brian Grant. Have a day. Time to listen to Coach Pete and also Uncle Al. <laughs> Especially Uncle Al. An offensive foul called against the privateers. Let's see that pass one more time, Al. All right, watch. He penetrates here. This is the Hawk. Then he scoops it underhand like a softball pass. And Grant is back in the game. It is 26 to 26-23, New Orleans in front. That's Michael Hawkins, who adjusts the goggles. He's back in the game. So it's Gentry, Gladden, and Hawkins as Pete Gillen goes back to the three-guard offense with Grant and Williams up front. I think in the NBA, they'd be better off playing with three guards. I think in college, you'd be better off playing with four guards, personally, and crash the boards. But again, who am I? You're Al McGuire. Why is that, Al? Williams scores, but why should you go with more guards, you think? I, I think it opens the court more. You can put more pressure. You can penetrate and dish off. And use a one-man zone. I'm sold. 10-2 run for Xavier in progress. It's a one-point game. Biggest lead was nine for New Orleans. Xavier has come back big time. Got to shoot from out to loosen up underneath. Darren Lesh into the game, number 20 for the Privateers. Melvin Simon, I think, on the tip again. Yes, you're right on the money there. 28-25, the Privateers lead, winding down the three minutes to go in the first half. Williams loops it into Grant. Grant's there. He's got it again. He's gotten hot all of a sudden to the tune of eight points. That's what we call a half alley-oop, a standing still alley-oop. Best way to feed the pivot is from the high pivot. Simon zips it in to Irvin Johnson, and he beat Aaron Williams to the punch that time. One of the biggest assets that Johnson has is his hands. Anything that's thrown near him, he controls. All I ever wanted of the big man was to be able to run and jump and have good, soft hands. That's all Johnson has the three things. That's all I wanted from a big man. I didn't like him to shoot from outside because I'd like to think or play like God that way. You weren't greedy, were you, about that? Well, no, not too greedy. <laughs> Foul was on Darren Lesh, a senior from Harvey, Louisiana. And on the line now is Michael Hawkins from Canton, Ohio. That's the 10th foul against New Orleans, so Hawkins will be shooting two. Hawkins used to wear contact lenses, and then he lost them all during games and said, the heck with it, I'm going to go with the goggles. Coming up at the half, Jim Nance and Bill Raftery from our New York studios, and you'll see some live action from these games. New Mexico State leading Nebraska in the east. Kentucky underway with Ryder in the southeast, and Coastal Carolina against number one Michigan out west. We've got ourselves a one-point spread here with two and a half minutes to go. Biggest lead was nine. Xavier last led seven to four. That was their biggest lead. And then the privateers took over. Darren Lesh is guarded by Steve Gentry. Trying to create a five count. Melvin Simon. Missed a couple of tip-ins, and Williams rejects him. Aaron Williams with the block, his second of the game. We have seen some terrific block shots on both sides tonight. Who's playing above their capability, in my opinion, is this kid Williams. He's been outstanding. Two ten to go in the first half. Privateers look like they're going to his zone. Yes, they're in the zone. One, two, two. 30 to 29. Xavier last had held the lead at seven to six. It's been a long while, but they can take the lead here with a basket. They're overplaying the ball, which you call a matchup. Wherever the ball is, they have man-to-man -man philosophy on it. This is Gentry with the ball. 
That's the shot clock down to 10 seconds. Hawkins is wide open on the left side. They don't get it to him, though. Got to put up a prayer now. Sykes blocked by Johnson with one second on the 45-second clock. That's the fourth block by Irvin Johnson. Good timing. The ball did not reach its zenith or its apex, so it wasn't goaltending. One second. Gladden gets it off in time. Boy, there's so much you can do with one second, isn't it? first lead since they were up seven to six early on 31 to 30 musketeers and a foul against xavier and that'll be the 17 foul sykes was over aggressive on johnson for sykes his second foul and the privateers will be shooting one and the bonus you see and i didn't do it you know what larry you did it. You were aggressive. <laughs> Let's take a peek at it. <laughs> no, you didn't do it, Larry. You just hit him with a cross body block. <laughs> Who, me, Mom? <laughs> Here's Irvin Johnson. Right ankle sprain in the Sun Belt Tournament. 85% is all he is, and he has been all over the floor. He now has 11 points, five rebounds, and four block shots. What college has done for this young man? Unbelievable. He is the guy that was stacking shelves five years ago. Excellent free throw shooter, concentrates. He's still about four or five years away from his potential. It drops. Both teams are hitting from the line. Michael McDonald will check back in, and Johnson will go out. A smart move. You don't want Johnson to pick up that third excellent, foul. Excellent move by Tim Floyd. He's an outstanding young coach. Every job that opens up, his name is in the hat. Nice move by the Hawks there. Williams, don't put it up against Melvin Simon. Williams got a little bit of war. New Orleans up by one. One minute remaining in the first half. Here's Aaron Williams. And Lesh gets the rebound. Darren Lesh, known for his defense, and that's one of the things they talk about defensively, the way you board. Clock remaining in the first half. 32 on the shot clock. There's about, yeah, there's about 10 seconds spread. They find Simon in good position and a block. Is that Williams? That was Williams again, I believe. If it is, it's number three for him. Latin finds an opening and skates in and is foul going in. But I'll tell you, any player on either side finds an opening, they're shooting to the hoop. As I told you from the top of the show, Dick, this was the game of the whole 32 games off the chalk. There's no difference between these two ball clubs. It might go down to the wire. A good move by Coach before, because that foul right there might have been on Johnson rather than on McDonald. McDonald committing his first. Irvin Johnson comes back in the game. Irvin Johnson is back in the game. He has scored 12 points, has been rebounding and blocking shots for the New Orleans Privateers. They had a nine-point lead. They lost the lead, and right now they're up by one. But on the line will be Jamie Gladden of Xavier, and he'll be shooting two. Dick Stockton and Al McGuire in the waning seconds of the first half of this first-round matchup between Xavier and New Orleans here at the Hoosier Dome. Jamie Gladden has played in 120 straight games. The only game he didn't start in was when he was a freshman, his first game. First game, yeah. That was the first miss, by the way, on the line by Xavier. And now the Privateers of New Orleans can play for the final shot. Tied at 32. This has been a whirlwind game in this first half, featuring just about everything. Shot blocking inside. Mason can penetrate anytime he wants. Here is Madison with the ball. Final seconds, throws up a prayer, and the time is going to run out in the first half. And that is the end of the first half with the score. New Orleans 32 and Xavier 32. Jim Nance and Bill Raftery will be along with Prudential Securities at the half after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the first round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Pizza Hut, who reminds you that any time's a great time to stop and smell the pizza. Budweiser, the king of beers, who reminds you friends know when to say when. And by Starter, look for the stars and you'll find Starter. 
see, Mr. McGuire. Well, there's 20 minutes left in the game. The, the baselines have neutralized each other, but who has really thrilled me is Johnson. He's much better than I thought, and the key with, his nickname is Slim, the key with Slim is that his greatness is in the future. He hasn't even scratched the yeah. surface. So I look, if I was a pro owner and a pro coach, I look at this guy as a lottery pick because I know six, seven years down the line that I got a, a, a good ball player, a guy that will listen, the guy will work. He's a project that will come through. Now, looking at offensive rebounds, that's where New Orleans has been effective. They've out-rebounded Xavier off the offensive glass 12-4, to and that's translated into nine second-chance points to zero for Xavier. Johnson, with 12 points, leads the New Orleans Privateers. Aaron Williams has 12. You're a little surprised at how well Aaron has done. Not that he's not a good player, but the way he's come out strong in this game. He plays aggressive. Normally, the, the book on him is sometimes that he's passive. I do believe that Xavier has to put the bodies more on the two big men from the privateers. All right, it'll be New Orleans ball there in white, and inbounding will be Reggie Garrett. It'll be Garrett up front along with Williams and Mason, the two guards, and deep down low, Melvin Simon and Irvin Johnson. Tied at 32, New Orleans had a nine-point lead, but Xavier turned on the afterburners in the final minutes of the first half. Xavier defending, they've got three guards, Gentry, Gladden and Hawkins, along with Williams and Grant, the big people inside. There's a nice pick for Johnson down low. Simon double back up. Steele, throw it away to Hawkins. Opening minute of the second half, Xavier in New Orleans, 32-32 to score. The Privateers, seated number eight, and the Musketeers, seated number nine in a tight duel. Privateers led by nine in the first half, but Xavier came back. You're looking at Gerald Williams and Rainey Mason, two five-nine guards, but with the ball is Reggie Garrett. Dick Stockton and Al McGuire here in New Indianapolis. You're looking at small guards going against small guards and big bodies down low going against big bodies. This game is a push. Steal nearly by Williams, and it's still New Orleans ball. At the outset, you said whichever guard tandem is effective, that'll be the difference. Well, Mason and Williams, five points between them. Gladden and Gentry have ten between them. And, of course, Hawkins, the other guard, has two. Here is Reggie Garrett. Garrett, for New Orleans. Well, he has a lot of points, Dick. The book on him is they lay off him. How many points does he have? He's got ten, and his season's average was eight. Grant goes up, and they're going to call the foul against Melvin Simon. He says no, but it'll be three against Melvin Simon of New Orleans. They probably moved McDonald in for Simons right away. It was no, no. It was a yes, yes, yes. You obviously hit him. <laughs> but you saved the basket that time. Grant was going to put the ball right in there. To give this guy credit. Hawk fed down to Grant. And Grant is on the line. No one in real foul trouble right now. Grant and Urban Johnson had picked up two in the first half, but now Melvin Simon has chalked up number three. So Grant on the free throw line. He's a 69% free throw shooter and misses the front rim. Didn't stretch out that time. If you shoot the free throw, you got to stretch out. You can get those heels off the floor. There they are. They're off the floor. And there it is in the twine. second half here at the Hoosier Dome. Indiana will take the court, and their fans of over 35,000 will go crazy. They're all dressed in red against Wright State in the next game. Williams was a little over aggressive, and he commits his second foul over the top of Urban Johnson. Both teams will most likely get, have to go to the zone later in this half because there's so many guys are going to be in foul trouble. Gerald Williams, serve, and Johnson was out for a screen. Now he's going to set down low. Simon and Johnson got to start picking for each other down low and feeding from the corner. Williams doing a good job denying Irvin Johnson from getting the pass. He's forcing him out further than he wants to be away from the basket. Good fake by Williams, high arcing shot, and Gerald Williams came in averaging 10 a game. He's got seven on three for 10 shooting, so he's been a little cool coming into the second half. I'm telling you, Sunday afternoon, I wouldn't want to face either one of these two teams. 
Grant is bumped. And let's see who that foul is on. Wright State, a 16 seed, will go against Indiana in the Lions' den. Coming up in the next game. Meanwhile, Urban Johnson has picked up his third personal foul. Johnson and Simon, the two big men for the privateers, each now with three fouls. Gladden is pushed, so two quick fouls against New Orleans. Gladden beat him to the baseline. Gerald. Williams reached in, fouled him. Two on him, two on Gerald Williams. Not even three minutes used up in the second half, and New Orleans has three personal fouls on him. And even three team fouls, if you want to count the group. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Gentry going inside. Good move by Steve Gentry. Rare when the backcourt scores in this game. There you're looking at the shooting. Xavier, four for 15 and three for 18 for New Orleans. Melvin Simon with a jumper. He's got seven now. They're letting them have the shot from the elbow. That's 15 feet out. But they're double teaming on Jackson. Pete Gillen wants a timeout. New Orleans up by a trio. The NCAA tournament game will select the Chevrolet players of the game, and in conjunction with the award, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to the general scholarship fund of both schools. Got a Mickey Mouse defense out there. Triangle two now. Now they went back to man to man. Keeping their power underneath. Latin from the baseline. Loose ball into the hands of Rainey Mason. New Orleans leading 38-35. You mentioned Pete Gillen called a quick timeout. He didn't wait for the commercial timeout, which would have came in a minute later, but with a three-point lead, didn't want New Orleans to get away from him. Meanwhile, Xavier has only one timeout left in the game. Kentucky the strong rider and Michigan all over coastal Carolina. But the Nebraska New Mexico State game is dead even. Lyle well, Williams, an apology. I didn't think that Aaron Williams was this good of a ball player. He's an excellent ball player for Xavier. And Reggie Garrett on the feed from Melvin Simon. They're running and gunning, and Garrett now with 12 points. Again, you mentioned Garrett, not known for his offensive play. He's a defensive performer, but he has come out strong offensively tonight. And there is Garrett, and there's Grant, Ryan Grant, with 11. 37, New Orleans leading. Less than five minutes have gone by here in the second half. That close to a five count that time. Good feed into Urban Johnson. Blocked by Williams. Five blocks for Aaron Williams. Lay off Garrett. He won't lay off this kid. This Gerald is Williams. That's right, and he can scoot around you and beat you off the dribble. Here is Garrett again. Stealing the ball, Garrett followed up a shot. Great hustle, took it away from Hawkins. One of the reasons Garrett doesn't score because he, when he shoots, he goes right away to rebound. Now, here's the, one of the block shots by Williams early. Now, here's the last one that just happened just before. Watch him go up, all leather. That's big time. They were a foot above the rim there. He's got five in the game. So he's got five of their six. Michael Hawkins committing the personal foul for Xavier and intercepts that entry pass. Three-point lead for New Orleans. Wide open. Gladden a three. So Gladden with his second three-point basket knocks the game again at 40. Gladden for three, but the Hawk hit him with it. That three-guard play really is done it for Xavier. They all contribute. a very pesky team when they've got the three. Look at Gentry. He's all over Garrett. Now he's trying to press Williams. Matching up down low now. Slicing in is Gerald Williams. Johnson tried to tip it in. Grant comes down with it. Xavier trying to take the lead. Grant wants the ball. Gentry. This is a three-point attempt. Grant's going to get called for over the top on Melvin Simon, and that'll be the third personal foul on Brian Grant. Got to watch. Grant might be getting tired. He had his hands on his hips just before. That's one of the signs of a ball player getting tired. Brian Grant, that's his third, the team's third. 
Don't forget, he's going up against much taller ball players than he, than he is. Now he gains one up and down like a ping pong match. Fred Hill, a 6'5 senior from Jackson, Mississippi. Maybe the toughest player, they say, on the privateers has come in the game. There's Sykes. So, so I think you may see a 12-rounder coming in now with Sykes and Hill in the game. Good move by Coach Pete there. Taking Grant out, give him a blow. Don't let him pick up his fourth right now. Mason is looking inside for Johnson. Nothing doing. Williams the same. Now they got him. And he gets hit on the hand. Too much that time by Williams. Aaron, the A-train, reached in. Third foul on Aaron Williams, and Irvin Johnson will go to the line to shoot two shots. So, a chance to break the tie for Irvin Johnson, who's had a big game thus far with 12 points, six rebounds. He has swatted away four. And here is Madison coming back in, and going out is Rainey Mason. Four for four from the free throw line is Irvin Johnson. Not much he can't do. It's all on the come. A little rough around the edges yet. Not in his foul shooting. His putbacks are, in the, the dunks are nice, but his putbacks, he, he seems to rush them. How good can he become? Well, I, this is only the first time I've seen him, so I, I can't judge, but he's much better than I thought. I would say in about three or four years, you're looking at an all-star player in, in the NBA. Pretty good. Yeah. You, I, I think if this is any sign how good he is, that you're looking at an owner or a coach that can see two, three years down the line in a lottery pick. New Orleans leading 42 to 40 on the free throws. Gladden being defended by Madison. Very tenacious defender you can see in the perimeter. Yeah, Madison, too much hands. Sykes. They want him to shoot that. Scramble out of bounds, and it's last touched by the privateer. So Xavier keeps the ball. Coach Pete is saying to Sykes, we don't want you to take that shot. He's saying, they give me the shot. Coach, what do you want me to do? Don't take the don't shot. Don't take the shot. <laughs> Can't you hear me? I knew you were going to say this. <laughs> Gladden will inbound with 13-19 on the clock in the second half. Pete Gillen's a graduate of Fairfield College. Well, there are a lot of small players out there, but a lot of tough players out there. Tonight. A lot of big motors. That means hearts. Gladden working in the paint. Tipped up and in. Was that Williams or was that? That was Johnson that tapped that one in. We'll have to see that in the replay, but I believe that it was Slim tapped it in. All right, they're going to give it credit to Williams, though, for the basket because he was closest. He gets 14. Yeah. The closest person to the opponent that taps in the wrong basket gets credit for it. Tied at 42. Williams baseline, intercepted by Tyrese Walker. We haven't seen Walker do his thing yet. He hasn't scored, but he's an exciting player. Gladden is fouled going to the hoop. And he really accelerated going to the basket. He was, he was upset with himself. And here's the last pass. I, I say that Johnson tapped it. Let's see. Yeah, see? I say you're right. You're absolutely right. And give the ball the credit to Williams because he was the closest. Reggie Garrett has picked up his third personal foul, so I think the observation you made about 10 minutes ago about both teams going into a zone before this game over is over is bearing fruit because we have Garrett, Simon, and Johnson, the front line of University of New Orleans with three fouls. Williams and Grant also have three, so two of the front line for Xavier. I think what's also going to happen if it stays tight like this under the eight-minute mark, you go to a chess game, and in the chess game, I, I got to favor Xavier. I think that um, New Orleans is more up and down like um, uh, the Cardinals from Louisville. They want to move in their athletic ability, where Xavier is more a type of club with good spacing. One out of two for Gladden. Xavier by one. At halftime, we were tied at 32. This has been a real tight game, especially since the final moments of the first half. Dick Stockton and Al McGuire, first round action. This is Gerald Williams missing a three for the University of New Orleans. They had a nine point lead, but now it's been back and forth. Xavier with the ball and a one point lead. With 12 minutes and five seconds to go in the second half, Gladden misses outside. Rebound by Brian Grant. 
Grant wants the ball. He feels hot. Melvin Simon knocked the ball into the hands of Garrett, his teammate. Good eyes, Dick. You got a piece of it. Privateers down by one with a chance to take the lead again. This has been a seesaw game in the second half. Garrett. And it's out of bounds. Xavier will take over. Good call by the official then. talk about the game Go ahead. Hoops, basketball this has been an excellent college basketball you got the little guys you got the big guys down low you got passing you got fast breaks going up and down a little bit of zones a little bit of fly swat of the ball everything's here this is an outstanding basketball game someone might blow it out now but what the first 30 minutes and you know there are two hungry teams out there too yep and you can sense that Gladden being defended by Madison Xavier leading by one. Boy, I tell you, really good defense by University of New Orleans. This is their best man-to-man -man they play tonight right here. Sykes gets inside. He got the layup. But until he went baseline, they really extended Xavier way out. First basket for Larry Sykes, who is not much of a scorer. And it's 45-42. Xavier in front. That is their biggest lead. They were up early at 7-4, but this is a lot more significant with 10.45 to go. Sykes throws into the backcourt. Dive! Woo! Hold yourself, watch yourself, son. And Grant they end up with it. Great save, oh, great play. save. That's the way Grant stayed. Williams reached in for two-shot foul. That was a phenomenal play because they hustled. It could have been backcourt. He could have knocked it into the hands of the other team, and Xavier got the ball and would go to the line. That is college basketball. That is amateur basketball. Watch this guy go downtown for this ball. He leads it way out. It looks like, hey, it's automatically out. And here comes the blue Superman. What great hustle. That was Hawkins. And he could have knocked it. It could have been a... A million things. What a play. Looked like he was walking on the moon. So Brian Grant will be shooting two. That was the 15 foul against New Orleans. Xavier with its biggest lead of the game against New Orleans. They've been on the hunt most of the time. And now Xavier with a lead and Brian Grant, their leading scorer, has now given them a five-point lead at 47-42 against New Orleans. The number nine seed Xavier, eight seed New Orleans, and this is a terrific game. Dick Stockton and Al McGuire at the Hoosier Dome. Right, this possession's a character check. Checking on the guts and the determination of New Orleans. Xavier is on a 7-0 run here and will have a foul away from the ball against Michael Hawkins. That'll be the 15 foul against Xavier, and for Hawkins, that will be number two against him as one of the three guards that Pete Gillen likes to use in the lineup. Both teams have five fouls on each club, so they're two away from the one and one is guarded outside by Gladden. Feed inside and Irvin Johnson. He's been quiet for a while, but Irvin Johnson now has 16 points to bring New Orleans to within three. Grant was neutralized that time because he didn't want to pick up his fourth foul. Sykes, big banger who likes to take the shot every once in a while, gets it into Brian Grant. Good block by Irvin Johnson out of bounds. It's still Xavier Ball, but five blocks for Irvin Johnson. Johnson that time didn't commit, just stayed straight. Grant put the ball up into his hands almost. And Aaron Williams, who has five block shots of his own for Xavier, has come in replacing Larry Sykes. Sykes has hustled, hasn't he? Sykes has done what they want. Don't shoot from the outside. You're going to get a ball, get it off the glass or off the floor. Williams tried to shoot before he got the ball, and there's a turnover, and here's Rainey Mason to Madison for three. That might have tied the game, but it was way off the mark. Xavier gets back. Here's the alley -oop to Tyrese Walker, and it's in by Williams on the follow-up. Good alert play by Aaron Williams. 
A new defensive look this time down by Xavier. They'll drop into a 2-3. There's the 2-3. That's just the biggest lead of the game for Xavier. They were trailing by as many as nine points in the first half. Madison for three. He misses again. And inside Irvin Johnson off the hands of Williams. They are seeing some terrific inside play, both sides. Williams that time was afraid of carrying the ball out of bounds. He would have been better carrying it out of bounds. Grant goes inside. It'll drop for him. Ryan Grant trying to match Irvin Johnson shot for shot. Grant has 15. Irvin has 18. If that ball would have come out, they would have counted it because Johnson hit the backboard. You can't hit the backboard and shake it. 8.35 remaining, second half. Five-point lead now. Still five as Mason misses from outside. Xavier in a position to open up a margin here. If they get up to seven, that's a first plateau. You can be a little bit coy and catty if you get to seven points. Can melt the clock a little bit. But right now, they need one more score to do that. It's going to be New Orleans ball as Aaron Williams couldn't save it. Number Steve Gentry is coming into the game in the backcourt for Xavier. And once again, Fred Hill for the Privateers. Johnson's hands are on his hips. That means he's tired. He needs a blow. They're going to have to get him out of there or call a timeout. Starting to breathe hard. See, even when they pull in their pants, that's a, that's a sign that, hey, I'm tired. I'm hurt. But they've been going up and down for the last 32 minutes. We're at the eight-minute mark. Five-point spread. Gerald Williams being hawked by Hawkins. Madison and Williams. The other guard, Rainey Mason, now with the ball. Inside, Irvin Johnson. Good out pass. Inside out, but they can't connect. And Mason missed from outside, and the rebound by Tyrese Walker. Xavier up by five. This could be a big possession for them. And Aaron Williams gives them a seven-point lead. Big stop coming up for the Muskies. You can sense the flow changing, and the Privateers call a timeout. Along with Al McGuire, this is Dick Stockton at the Hoosier Dome, an exciting first-round matchup. New Orleans in white, Xavier in blue, and the Musketeers lead 53-46, to their biggest lead of the ball game, with 7.20 remaining in the second half. New Orleans with only two baskets in the last nine minutes, and that's been the story. They're looking to force New Orleans to shoot from the outside. With seven minutes to go and down by seven points. Madison on the deflection still has the ball. You brought out the fact that the backcourt is going to decide it in New Orleans backcourt. The starters are 0 for 6 from the field. They're down to four seconds on the shot clock. And Gerald Williams is 3 for 12. So they are ice cold, and that'll be the fourth foul against Gerald Williams. So Xavier's backcourt has taken over in the duel of the guards, which you thought would be the deciding factor with the baseline neutralized by both teams. Yes, it, it is the deciding factor right now, but there's plenty of time left in this game. But if Xavier scores this time down, they'll go to a spread and eat up a lot of clock. In the lineup, Jamie Gladden, Steve Gentry, Two guards right now. There you see the shooting for the guards. Now, Xavier doesn't seem that impressive, but New Orleans at 3 for 24 has really hurt them because the front court of Xavier has been more effective with Williams with 18 and Grant at 15 points. 6.40 remaining, 53 to 46. Right now, Xavier's in control of this. Tyrese Walker goes the baseline. Block. And the second effort is good. The basket counts. And a foul, it may be against Melvin Simon. And if it is, it'll be number four on Simon. Now, what about the front court? We told you about the back court as Pete Gillen instructs his players on the sideline. Look at those numbers. Front court shooting. A lot of them are put backs. What happened in the second half so far, Xavier has shut down the baseline of New Orleans. Both been kind of equal. The difference has been in the backcourt. So it's now 56 to 46, the biggest lead of 10 points. Here's Tony Madison, hits a big three. Ooh, what a big three. Don't say big, it's big, big, big. All right, 
That's the first three-point basket of the night for New Orleans. Odd man to man, trying to create play. That's Sykes. He's in there with Walker and Williams. Gladden and Gentry at guard. So it's a bigger team for the blue-shirted Musketeers of Xavier. Want to keep the ball in Good. Gladden's hand. Boy, I'm watching Williams in practice yesterday. He didn't show me anything like this. All of a sudden, now he's like the uh, Marvel he's Man. Saving it for the game, Al. Why not? 20 points for Aaron Williams. Double his season's average. Five and a half remain. Nine-point lead. Reggie Garrett tries for a three. Doesn't go. And there is Simon who draws the foul with his relentless offensive board. What a great pass from Sykes. And Williams going to the hoop. Here he's going to the hoop. A nice bounce pass in. Then he has hanging time up there. Sykes will go out of the game. He's had a tremendous ball game off the bench. Brian Grant, Xavier's leading scorer, will replace him. And Michael Hawkins will also come in replacing Gentry. Simon, one for two from the line. He's a power player. First team all Sun Belt this year. That's Tim Floyd. Mentioned one of the highly respected young coaches in the nation. Fifth year at the University of New Orleans. Spent two years at Idaho. Garrett made one out of two. Or Simon did. He has eight points. Halftime score. Michael McDonald has come into the ball game for the privateers. Second chance points. You can see Xavier 9-2 in the second half. It's out of bounds. It's gone the same way. Almost turned it over with soft pressure that time. They were just looking to annoy. They weren't looking to really turn you over. Two years ago, Pete Gillen's Musketeers lost to Connecticut in the second round of the Midwest region. Looking to get to the second round this time, hopefully. He's been there eight years, first six years. He went to the NCAA last year. It's a drought, and he's back here again this year. Williams nearly walked with it. Latin trying to get inside over Madison. Good defense by Madison, but it's last touched by New Orleans, so Xavier will have it with 15 seconds on the shot clock. 58 to 50, Xavier in front with just under five minutes to go. Look, they're kicking it to Grant. Now there it is, Grant should take it. Hey, the shot clock's not moving, just started. Stuck on 12 for about three seconds. Nice back door. Trying to overplay and Walker misses the shot. Reggie Garrett was overplaying and Walker nearly burned him. So now come the privateers, Madison misses the three. Mason inside the three-point line. Now, New Orleans just firing away. They're rushing it. They got plenty of time left. They have to have defensive stops to stay in the ball game. Been a 17-point turnaround in this game from the nine-point lead New Orleans had in the opening half. Grant can take McDonald easy here. Watch him go up over him. He made a pass he didn't need to make, and Walker is fouled. He could have shot. Instead, he wanted to make the extra pass, but the Musketeers will go to the line anyway. Michael McDonald with the personal foul. And coming back in is Gerald Williams. Gerald Williams has four fouls. You saw the foul trouble. Tyrese Walker in the line for Musketeers, two shots. 58 to 50 to score, Xavier in front. 4.08 remaining, they have played a terrific second half. We were tied at 32 at intermission. Williams um, usually doesn't bottom out both foul shots, but I think this time he will, he seems very confident. It's almost a fear when you watch a foul shooter. There you go. How do you mean? That's a feel, a rhythm. Sometimes they're just moving their body right. Regardless of their style. Yes. Xavier, 14 of 17 from the free throw line. That's been a big factor in their game. Big factor in the game. They stopped the ball going into Johnson. Give credit to Pete Gillen's defense. Got to score from outside here. You got to put it up. 
345 remaining. Reggie Garrett doesn't go, and here's Hawkins with the rebound. He made the most spectacular hustle play of this game here in the second half. Content to use the clock now. Pete wants the clock. He'll back it up. I'd be shocked if they went early. Leading by 10 points. Biggest lead for either side in this game. 60 to 50 right here. And Grant goes in. Irvin Johnson lost it. Grant from Hawkins. That's a big, big, big basket, Al. And Hawkins in the land of the Giants comes up with the ball and kicks a back pass to Grant, which gives them a 12-point lead. It's must time now for three. Madison is short with it, and Irvin Johnson is pushed. Grant, by the way, with 17 points and 10 rebounds, got off to a real slow start in this game. And here's the man in the land of the Giants. Nice bounce back pass to Grant. And Grant says, thank you, man. Meanwhile, Grant picks up his fourth foul as Hawkins goes over to talk to Pete Gillen, and Irvin Johnson will be on the line, shooting two. Irvin Johnson is tired out. I doubt whether he'll make these. He hasn't missed a foul shot yet tonight, I believe, but he's tired. But he made it anyway. Still got to make one more, though, Al. Well, he's tired. He's been yeah. going up and down this court, and they've been pumping and grinding. You could see during the... Uh, timeouts he's been holding on to his hips his shorts trying to get a breather yeah you're right he's tired he missed the front rim i thought he missed both personally all right here we go got to turn got to press you need action you need three possessions and hit three three pointers to go into to 11 point lead for xavier grant goes in what a move by grant and draws the foul He's got 19 points now, double figures in rebounds, and this is the Brian Grant that was the player of the year in the Midwest Collegiate Conference. Watch the ball, kicked in nice, fakes to the left and spins around to the right, stays close. McDonald obviously fouled him. So McDonald fouls him and Grant goes to the line. 19 fouls against New Orleans. Xavier has committed seven. And there's Grant, who has 11 of his 19 points in the second half. Brian Grant's honorable mention All-American this year, AP. And leading the nation in field goal percentage in a timeout. Pete Gillen's team in control in a big way. 14-point lead for Xavier of Ohio, the Musketeers from the Midwestern Collegiate Conference to move into the second round of the Midwest region here in Indianapolis. New Orleans Privateers led by as many as nine in the first half. Get up, get Gerald up. Williams fires it up. Here comes Xavier. Two minutes and 19 seconds to go in this second first round matchup. Xavier of Ohio. Coming from behind after a tie at the half and down by nine in the first half at Forged in front and leading 65 to 51. Let's take a look at New Orleans shooting about 30%, Al. Well, there's no way you can win shooting 30%, but everything's down there and tight. If you know that there's only one score from touchdown land over here, you got to have a balance in scoring if you're going to win. Jamie Gladden on the line, misses the front end of the two shots. That's Tim Floyd, who's privateers, 26 and three, a terrific record this year and ranked as high as 13th in the country, best ever since they moved into Division I. He got the second shot because this was a 10th foul on New Orleans, it's automatically two shots. So it's 66 to 51, since New Orleans led 42 to 40, Xavier has outscored New Orleans 26 to nine. Finally Johnson. tapped in. Might have been Irvin Johnson. 66 to 53 with under two minutes to go and an offensive foul called against Hawkins. Will turn it over. Good move by time by Jerry Williams. A little bit of acting at the end. The Emmys are coming up, I think, next week anyway. <laughs> or the Oscar, whatever. Awards. Xavier lost five games this year. One of their losses was at Louisville by three points. They'll play the winner of Indiana and Wright State coming up next. And another foul is called. This one against New Orleans. Gerald Williams. Gerald Williams. 
Williams is out of the game. Fifth personal foul. And he leaves having scored seven points. And he's replaced by Rennie Mason. Well, he's back next year, this five foot nine defensive giant and water bug. I like the way he played, and New Orleans should be back in the big dance next year. Here is Michael Hawkins. It's the free throw. New Orleans is one for 12 from three point land, so when they needed to get some big bombs to get back in the game, they weren't even close. Poor percentage for them. I thought they were throwing rather than shooting at the end. Free throws by Hawkins, 68 to 53. Xavier opens it up big here. Credit Grant and Aaron Williams, the inside players, out of bounds. It is still New Orleans ball. And we'll have substitutions. It's Irvin Johnson is going to go out of this tournament, but with a lot of praise. 21 points for Johnson, eight rebounds and six blocks. They get nine boards for him. That's surprising, New Mexico State blowing out uh, Nebraska. Another big eight. Big eight was one of the better conferences, in my opinion, this year, but they seem to be biting the dust. Kansas like, State, Missouri, huh? Yeah, it looked like OK Corral or high noon. Who would think that the Atlantic 10 would have 4-0 record in the NCAA tournament even before the second round? And you know, you would see the Big Eight with all those losses. Who would think they would get four invitations into the uh, NCAA? Uh, they are now in the position to cause a lot of problems in the Big East for the local, uh, the local audience. The Big East has kind of slipped down a little bit, maybe just for one year, maybe not. The Atlantic 10, they're on their afterburner. Of course, Seton Hall and St. John's both victorious in their first games with the Big East. Pittsburgh playing Utah tonight. Well, Seton Hall is, is playing their best right now. If I had to pick just right this moment, I'd probably pick Seton Hall. To win it all or go to the yeah, final? Yeah, the way they're playing now. We go to the final four. Stepping on the line was Walker, so it'll be the privateer's ball. The big men for Xavier Grant and Aaron Williams tonight. <laughs> Great camera work. Excellent camera work. On the turnover, here comes Xavier with 108 to go. Ryan Grant with 20 points and 10 rebounds, and Aaron Williams with 20 points and 7 rebounds and 5 blocks. Here we go to four corners. And that's why Xavier will move into the second round and play the winner of the next game coming up here at the Hoosier Dome between the Indiana Hoosiers, ranked number one, and Wright State from Dayton, Ohio, seated number 16. Pete Gillen, very proud of this club. Coming up, of course, Indiana and Wright State right here at the Hoosier Dome. Cincinnati, they reached the Final Four last year out of the Midwest, playing in the East this time, and they'll go against Coppin State. Pitt, we mentioned, from the Big East against Utah. Utah Not could be a sleeper in that area. Well, Rick Majerus, your former assistant coach, and the terrific job he's done in Utah, one of the most popular coaches in the country. Do you know he lives in a hotel out there? Yeah. When he went to be interviewed four years ago, they interviewed him in the hotel. He's living in the same hotel the last four years. Why don't you tell him to get, into a, get an apartment or rent a house or buy something? Hey, you tell Rick. Rick knows more basketball than anybody I know. Firing away is Eric Matthews, who's come in the game. New Orleans 31% from the field, and a lot of that you can credit Xavier's defense, keeping the ball away from the big people inside. Great job done at halftime by Pete Gillen. Go inside to Rainey Mason. New Orleans with 13 points in the last 14 minutes of this game. Less than a half a minute to go. It was a terrific game for a while, and then all of a sudden you said, I don't know if this game will blow out, but it's great right now. And at that moment, Xavier started their blowout. Well, it was due for someone to make a move. It was inevitable because it was so tight for the first 34, 35 minutes that someone had to make a rush. And once Xavier made the rush, New Orleans couldn't answer. You see the smiles and the glee of the team that wins. Xavier will move into the second round. After not getting into the tournament last year, they're back in and back in the second round for Pete Gillen's team. They are now 24 and 5 for the season. And here is Michael Hawkins, who started as one of the three guards, just six feet tall, but a dynamo all over the court. In for Xavier. 
and the crowd is waiting for Robert Montgomery Knight. Walker, the IU team. Walker leaves the game to Juan Rose. Will come in for Xavier and the disappointed look on the privateers' faces. New Orleans will finish at 26 and 4. Pretty good record. 20 seconds remaining. Johnson's college career is history, but we'll hear from him a lot more, you can be sure. As I said earlier, it'll take a couple of years for him to keep learning, but he's on the come. And the lay-in is missed. Xavier wins the game. They emptied their bench with Eric Knopf. And Xavier wins Irvin Johnson. Finishes the game with a great effort, 21 points. And for Al McGuire, this is Dick Stockton in Indianapolis. The final score, Xavier 73, New Orleans 55. And Xavier moves into the second round Sunday and will play the winner of Indiana and Wright State. The Chevrolet players of the game are Aaron Williams of Xavier and Irvin Johnson of New Orleans. Stay tuned for more NCAA tournament action. You're watching CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA basketball championship. Right now, let's send you to New York and Jim Nance. Jim? All right, Dick, within seconds, Xavier advances. Neil McCarthy's New Mexico.